Hello and welcome to this edition of Bayou Time. I'm your host, Keith Weissite, licensed clinical social worker with Travel and Home Care. Thank you for joining us, however you may be joining us. We appreciate it very, very much. And again, this time of year, around the beginning of May, we've got to start thinking about hurricane season. There's some people that think about hurricane season all year long. One of those people, our friend and colleague, Earl Hughes. Earl, welcome back. Hey, Keith. Great to be here today. Thank you, my friend. Of course, Earl is the Director of Emergency Preparedness and Homeland Security for Terrebonne Parish. And so, Earl, you guys have been really busy. Y'all spend a great deal of time, I know. But May is really one of those times when y'all start kind of talking with Hurricane Center and talking with uh, a lot of those people that are in the know about what we can expect this year. Yeah, and we also, uh, you know, we have what we call emergency support function managers. It's about, you know, 20, 25 people that uh, manage certain functions during a hurricane. And uh, so we start meeting with those guys in the parish, uh, you know, going over, you know, things that need some improvement. Right. Uh, it's never perfect. Right. Things so that we learned from the past. Things that we learned right? in the past uh, and making sure that we're ready and prepared for the upcoming hurricane season and uh you know we we always prepare for the worst right and hope for the best yeah. and, and you got a little uh, prayer in there too right we prepare <laughs> yeah. for the worst hope oh, for yeah. the best and pray that we have another season like we did last year that's correct and uh so uh but you know the, the parish department uh under the direction of parish president uh, gordon dove are all pretty much you know prepared and ready um uh, to uh to 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 battle this next hurricane season mm -hmm. uh hopefully we won't have any hurricanes uh we still have about uh you know close to 1200 families that are still in temporary housing right so i'd like to you know remind those uh, that are in temporary housing to please uh, uh plan on where you're going to shelter uh in the event of a tropical storm uh, because those trailers uh, aren't, aren't safe for a tropical storm. Right. So uh, we will provide sheltering again this year in the event that uh, you need to come to a, a parish shelter. And uh, once again, if we have a major storm, we will evacuate to uh, the city of Monroe and the Washita Parish. Uh, and, and again, um, the route to get there is one of those things that we need to think about and talk about. As you know, David was really uh, kind about sharing that there's a there's because of construction with DOTD there's a one lane road that's for correct several and, miles. Uh, uh, I'm glad and, uh, 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 Mr. Nakam brought that up. Right. Um, just past Tuesday, the uh, National Hurricane Center uh, was down in New Orleans at Lakefront Airport. They brought in their Hurricane Hunter aircraft from Keesler Air Force Base, and uh, they also run some. NOAA has some smaller jets that they use uh, and planes. Uh, that they uh, get data from within the storm. Also, the FEMA Region 6 Hurricane uh, Preparedness Director uh, was also down. Wow. And she helps us... Uh, uh, she helps us during the year on, on FEMA aspects during a storm. One of the things they did for us was they did a traffic study for us, uh, an evacuation and traffic study a couple of years ago uh, to help us with evacuation times, like how long it would take to get <clears throat> people evacuated idea. all the way from the southern part of the parish uh, through the parish and, and to, the, to the evacuation routes that they would need. I had the opportunity to talk to her Tuesday and let her know that we need to reevaluate those evacuation times because of the issue that we have in New Iberia uh, with the uh, down to one lane road closure. And right. uh, so she, you know, says yes, we need to re we need to get with the consultants and, and go back and, and redo those evacuation times for this year just to make sure uh, that we evacuate. We let people know in, in enough time to evacuate. Um, we're looking at trying to avoid that area. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're going to push to the people of, Saint, of uh, Terrebonne Parish to go through uh, LA-1308 up okay. to the Sunshine Bridge and then catch I-10 or go up through uh, uh, Thibodeau, Chack Bay, okay. uh, through St. James, Veterans cross the Gramercy, right. uh, Veterans Bridge, and hit I-10 on that route. That way you avoid that traffic congestion that's going to happen in New Iberia. Right. Listen, it, it, it's, it's pretty, it can be very difficult traffic congestion in general with, with all four of those lanes coming both ways. It's one lane road both ways. That's correct. And so even people that are trying to turn around or people that are trying to kind of change what their, their scenario is going to be about moving forward or being stuck, it's, it's going to be difficult. And we had, you know, we kind of experienced this a little bit two years ago during Ida because the, uh, 
Chaflower River Bridge in Morgan City was down to one lane because they were doing a uh, painting on the bridge. Right. Uh, so we did experience some delays uh, on that bridge uh, it, through Morgan City. So what the, the, the main issue that we need to let everybody know is you may have to leave a little earlier. Right. Okay. To, to avoid the traffic congestion that may, may be, you know, come doing an evacuation. And, and again, people don't like to hear that necessarily, but I really think that Ida, if it's taught us anything, it's taught us that let's be prepared for the worst. Yeah. Because the worst has happened to a lot of people. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, you know, why are they doing this during hurricane season? Well, it's not that they're doing it during hurricane season. It just takes, it's going to take a year for that whole project to be complete. Right. Might at even least, be a, at, least. at least a year. Yeah. So, so it is going to run into hurricane season and we just need to be prepared as citizens and, and to, to do pre-planning on how we're going to get out and through this traffic. Yeah. In, in fact, David Nockham made the comment that, you know, it may be two hurricane seasons that we're dealing with that construction, but you know, if anybody drove through, New Iberia on Highway 90, you know that it's very difficult. Right. To uh So, you know, and the thing is, like the Iberia Parish and the city of New Iberia, they're going to have to put uh, police officers on roads that right. you know, to bypass that area to help get people through. So they got a lot of preparation to do, too, for this hurricane. Yeah, and they're working on that, and they're doing that with DOTD. Right. You know, you're talking about early preparation, and it's always interesting to me how people want to wait and there are some really important reasons why we shouldn't. And I think if, again, if I'd have taught us anything, it taught us just to listen to the professionals who do this work every day. But there is some changes through the Hurricane Center, right? About sure. what our predictions are. Sure. So the you know, National Hurricane Center is, is always looking for ways to uh, prepare us better uh, during the storm season to give us information quicker. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the biggest things they have done this year is they have uh, increased the five-day outlook for development to a seven-day outlook. Okay. So uh, now when you see the seven-day outlook, you're going to be you're, you're going to see longer tracks. It's typically like an uh, an oval shape that's right. on the the map um, because they increased it by two more days. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. So the technology so more elongated, right? That's that'd be more elongated. Now that doesn't mean that you know something may pop up and they're gonna say it's gonna have a development within two or three days. I mean, right. That, that still right. could happen. But uh, this is going to give people more lead time. Uh, I think it'll give people more uh, time to, to continue to watch the development of what's happening. Um, so uh, I think it's going to be a good thing for us. You know, with the development of technology, new satellites, more satellites, uh, computers, supercomputers, uh, it's given the National Hurricane Center uh, more tools to let us know what's going to happen and, and sooner. Yeah, and so one of the things that we were talking about earlier, again, David Ockham was really good, really involved about El Nino versus La Nino. And I know that there's no direct correlation, but those weather patterns make a difference for what some of the storm activity is, some of the shearing that may take place. But we've got to keep watching for that. We need to make sure that it's going to be an El Nino, that it's going to be the, that jet stream is going to be where it is. And so we, we keep watching that very closely, right? Right. It has to develop. Right. Okay. So, uh, and they think it's going to develop sometime in August, September, which is our peak of the hurricane season. Um, typically what happens with El, Ni uh, El Nino is we have more westerly sh shear, wind mm -hmm. shear that comes across the Gulf, kind of dampens the development right. or, or dampen the strength of these storms. Right. Uh, it's not a guarantee. Right. It's just something that, that we've seen in the past. Uh, you know, the, the past, for the past couple of years on four storms, uh, Laura, Delta, Ida, Ian, all were storms that developed within a three day period to a major hurricane. Right. Right. So we they need ramped to, up so very, we very the, quickly. That's correct. So we as the public and officials need to be ready to act upon a development in a shorter period of time than what we're used to. We used to say five days. Mm -hmm. You know, now we need to shorten that and be ready to go within a three-day period. Right. Uh, you know, especially if you own businesses and, and you have other uh, elderly uh, or disabled people that you need to take care of, you know, you need to be ready to, to act within those three days because that's what we're seeing more and more now. Right, and and again, we, we've got the, the Hurricane Center has prepared to look for a seven-day outlook when they can. That's correct. 
and we can't always do that. Again, like you mentioned, those four big storms, and sometimes some of these really these bigger storms that make really big impacts ramp up very quickly in that two to three day period. Yeah, and you know, the biggest uh, uh, more deaths occur during a hurricane because of inland flooding. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, either from storm surge or excessive rainfall. And, you know, when we think of a hurricane, we think of wind. Right. Okay, and that, yeah. that, that the winds cause these deaths. Um, but we're, they're, they're seeing that it's the inland flooding. So the National Hurricane Center is going to start giving what they call peak storm surge numbers. They, they, it was experimental last year, but it's going to be permanent now. Okay. Uh, along the Gulf Coast and the East Coast, you're going to be able to see where those storm surge peaks are going to occur and to heed the warning of those storm surges. Uh, one of the issues down in, in, in for Hurricane Ian, people, did not, people thought that since they weren't in that cone of error, that they didn't really have to worry about the storm surge. That's not correct. Mm-hmm. Okay, the storm surge extends many miles on either side of that cone. Right. So you need to be you need to be aware of that that right. that's going to occur. And, and, and their numbers are pretty accurate. Uh, you know, plus or minus five feet. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're talking twenty twenty five feet. Right. You so know, the they, difference between twenty and twenty five feet. Yeah. It's kind of moot. So, but you know, anything over, you know, if anything, if it's over your head, anything over six feet, six feet, you you need to be concerned about that. Right. And and to take heed and and evacuate if told to. Right. And again, we've learned a lot of things from these different storm systems. We learned a lot from Ida, learned a lot from Ian. And I am very happy that we're making these and implementing these changes that we need to see so we can all be safer. That's that's correct. That's correct. And, you know, thankfully here in Terrebonne Paris through the Terrebonne Levy and Conservation District with the executive director, uh, Reggie Dupre, and, and the uh, board president, uh, Tony Alford, I mean, we got, a, we got a dynamic hurricane protection system. Yes, we do. It's just not complete. Yeah. Okay. We're working on it. We're working on it. And we're getting, you know, we're finally getting federal uh, awareness and federal dollars coming in. So I'm, I'm going to repeat what my old friend Wendell Curall always said about our levy systems. They're made to protect property, not, not people, li- not lives, not lives. Okay. Right. So just remember that, you know, even though we have this dynamic levy system to protect us from storm surges, uh, you need, you need to heed these warnings uh, in the event that we have overtopping or some type of other failure that yeah. may occur. I mean, they, yeah. so let, let uh, the flooding affect your property, not you. Not you. Right. Okay. And find a way to, to get out when we That's need correct. to. That's Earl, correct. always appreciate your time. Thanks for spending so much time and energy with them uh, and visiting with them and, and being our leader when it comes to that. We'll have you on as always and, uh, updates from you. We appreciate, appreciate that. All right. Thank you. All right, guys, that'll do it for this particular segment. Don't go anywhere. A lot more Bayou time when we continue.